Tifu makes an uncharacteristic mistake. While moving to the next zone, he scuffs a build and takes 50 fall damage. The best known American pro has never panicked like this before. He pushes for high ground and looks to heal, protecting himself with a one by one. But unfortunately for Tifu, he makes another fatal mistake. He doesn't cover every angle and he leaves himself vulnerable. A budding Korean star, Envy, sees his chance and rocks the best player in the world with a pump to the face. One of these Korean stars is going to become the next Tifu. The question is, which one? Tifu is widely considered the best Fortnite player on the planet. So when you put him against players that have only played the game for one month, you'd expect nothing less than a blowout. But that wasn't the case. Although Tifu and Kitty Plays took home the duo trophy, it was not easy. Sino and O-King gave them a run for their money. The match was incredibly close and came down to the very last minute of competition. It's safe to say that the unofficial overlords of esports have entered the fray. And in this video, we're gonna analyze some of the plays that Tifu made, but also some developing Korean superstar players and how Korea will change competitive Fortnite forever. Clip number one is a 2v2 fight in the mid game. Tifu's first move is to gain high ground with a quick 90. Once he and Kitty plays pin enemy number one on the ground, he drops down for a pump shot. The trade doesn't go as well as he wanted, so he quickly builds back to high ground. He has no idea where enemy number two is, so he has to play safe. He was actually pretty scared of getting pinched, but he has reinforced high ground and nails his enemy twice with an AR. Both enemies are low HP and Tifu smells blood. He safely makes his way down and as he does, you can see him turn his camera to check on enemy number one. That's actually some really good awareness. So now that he's in the clear, he and Kitty plays look to isolate player number two. But pay attention to this really, really good retake. He ends up jumping to the side and catches himself with the floor. Now it's time for a barrage of Tifu classics. But unfortunately, he only goes for a few chip shots and loses high ground. Instead of fighting for it, he drops down to low ground because you don't always need to fight for high ground. That's the old meta. Instead, force your enemies to come down to you, just like you see here, and then bait your enemies into a huge shotgun shot. So this play was a straightforward textbook example of how to play 2v2 fights. I thought we'd show this to you so that you can kind of understand how Tifu did it in this tournament. The key here is to shift between high ground and low ground. Start from high ground to weaken your enemies and then work your way down to finish the kill. There are no better ways to fight in duos. And now we're gonna go into clip number two, which is actually pretty special. I'm gonna show you guys three examples of how to use dynamite just like Tifu. It's pretty next level stuff. Here, Tifu is sandwiched between two players. He needs to act fast, but doesn't have the materials to push. He cooks a dynamite for a second and throws it on top of the roof. Right before the dynamite pops, he breaks the roof with his AR and the dynamite falls onto his opponent's lap. He does the exact same thing and forces him to disengage. Then he goes in with attack and finds the kill. The takeaway from this example is actually that the dynamite can work just like a falling clinger. Use this to your advantage because no one else knows this yet. You're going to catch everybody off guard. In the next example, Tifu dominates a 2v2 fight by making it rain dynamite again. His first one explodes on a player and breaks almost every wall, clearing the way for Kitty Place to secure high ground. He supports her from the back line with his AR and even more dynamite. His opponents have no chance to defend themselves because of the constant explosions and Tifu's aim. The last dynamite is icing on the cake and it opens up a path for him to get up close and personal with his shotgun. He turns the corner and pops the last player in the face. The last example is short and sweet, but it's still a great display of dynamite's capabilities. Tifu sits in a one by one hiding from his opponent. He doesn't want to risk taking damage, so he lights up a dynamite and throws it at the very last second. It explodes midair and kills a player that hasn't been seen yet. The idea that you can destroy a 4x4 area with dynamite midair is insane. Think of the possibilities. You can bring down an entire structure by exploding dynamite this way. The fuse timer is 5 seconds long, so start counting Mississippis in your head when you light the fuse. In this clip, Tifu's death is in the first solo match. I'm in no way BMing Tifu here. I'm using this clip instead to show you what happens when you underestimate your enemies. We've seen Tifu win games from terrible positions time and time again. That wasn't the case this time. He's full health and shields with a great loadout, and this is normally a winning formula for him. But let's examine how everything went downhill. 
With the storm on his back, Tifu makes his move 20 seconds early. He scans the area and protects himself when necessary. Everything here is standard. He gets clipped by a bullet and then ends up turtling. But instead of drinking a slurp juice and running east, he edits out and pushes through the middle. This is where things go wrong. Take a look at the minimap. He's extremely close to the safe zone and has time to spare. If he had went east, he would have natural high ground and more importantly, wouldn't be at risk of getting pinched. When rotating, the path of least resistance is tempting, but you need to consider what is next. Just because you made it doesn't mean you're safe. I know for a fact that Tifu is aware of this because he's an intelligent player. He would not have done this in a skirmish. He underestimated his opponents and made a fatal decision. Right as he crosses into the safe zone, he gets pelted from the west and then the east. And to top it off, Aim Hero enters his tunnel and takes him out. This all happened in 20 seconds. Tifu was not ready for this type of aggression and placed himself on a silver platter to his enemies. He has never had to play against this type of aggression before. Although he goes on to win the duo tournament, the solos was a different story. Korean players are clearly on the rise. It's no secret that Koreans dominate every esport that they participate in. Think League of Legends, StarCraft, Fortnite will be no different. I will talk about several Korean superstars all trying to become the next Tifu. Remember Envy? Not only did he rock Tifu in game two, he also displayed great fundamentals in a 15 kill game. Here he's in a 1v2 situation. He shoots his rockets at great spots and builds immediately. A textbook example of how to play with explosives. He's also building smart with reinforced ramps. He's taking shots right when he has the high ground. He even has the foresight to react to his opponent's rockets by backtracking and immediately building back up to high ground. Anytime his enemies tried to make a push, he responds by building and pressuring. And to end the fight, he fires a rocket and follows up with his AR. This play is scary. Envy has only played for one month, a month. Think about what we were all doing over here in our first month of Fortnite. Most of us were emoting in celebration when we built a wall in front of our ramp. He's building with thought, he's building with control, and most importantly, he's ahead of the curve, just like Tifu was a year ago. Just imagine what this guy will do in a year. Aim Hero is another player that's caught my eye. He kills Tifu in the third clip, but astounds again later in the duo tournament. He solo 1v2s Tifu and Kitty plays. Let's watch from Tifu and Kitty plays point of view. Tifu is stuck on low ground, but is looking to pressure his enemies. He gets shot out by a mounted turret, and Kitty plays is quick to his rescue. They're able to isolate Aim Hero's teammate and secure the kill, but here's where the magic starts. Aim Hero has uncontested high ground against Tifu and Kitty Plays, who are both still healthy and hiding. Tifu makes a standard play and branches out of his tunnel. Doing this gave away his position. With this information, Aim Hero puts on his cape and breaks straight into Tifu's one by one and challenges him. Like I said earlier, Tifu has never faced this type of aggression before, and he gets obliterated. It's a 1v1 now. Kitty Plays has Aim Hero stuck in a box and is pushing in. He's defending every angle flawlessly and Kitty Plays resorts to her grenades. Once the grenades are out, you can hear him running away and catch a quick glimpse of him right here. He's tunneling around and replacing builds. He's playing like a real pro. He has Kitty Plays completely lost. She eventually finds him and breaks his roof and replaces it, but Aim Hero doesn't panic. He trades shots and is calm enough to find cover under the opening. And once the roof breaks, he replaces it with his own. Obviously, always do this in your games too. Kitty Plays goes back to her grenades and Aim Hero responds with a 200 IQ play. He edits a corner of the wall right under Kitty Plays, so she drops down to the side, ready to fire. What's crazy about this was, this was actually a bait. He edits out the other side and is already two tiles up in the air. Kitty Plays is fighting for high ground and makes a crucial error. She builds a few unnecessary roofs. Then the sound cues allowed Aim Hero to track her down and land a nice deagle shot from behind. Kitty Place is in pure survival mode right now. She gets shot down and pumped in the face. To cap it off, Aim Hero's BM game is on point. Aim Hero just 1v2'd the best American player plus Kitty Place. He did so in commanding fashion with techniques the finest pros struggle with in high pressure situations. So what does this all mean? What does this mean for competitive Fortnite? If history is any indication, then we're gonna see some major changes very soon. Koreans will explode onto the scene. Many of the top esports like League of Legends and Overwatch follow Korean infrastructure. 
Best of fives in League of Legends were arguably the best thing to be added into tournament formats, and that was all thanks to the Koreans. Even in this tournament, the scoring system was unlike anything we've ever seen before. With Fortnite's current scoring system in limbo, maybe the Koreans can come in and finally give Epic a competitive format that works. Koreans have proven to be the best esports players. They are known to be hardworking, they learn incredibly fast, and most importantly, Fortnite is tailored for them. It's fast-paced and mechanically intensive. Korea will not struggle to pick up Fortnite, and Tifu just got a small taste of what Korean talent and aggression is capable of doing. So he and everybody in NA and EU better get used to it, because it's about to get a whole lot more competitive. This has been Kristoff with Pro Guides. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate all you guys commenting. It's honestly really great to see everyone's feedback. This is a very controversial topic. A lot of you guys might have some opinions. I want to hear them all in the comments. I want to get this conversation started. Where do you think Fortnite esports is going? Where do you think the Koreans fit into this? Give us some of your personal feedback, some of your opinions. I really want to hear them. Put them down below. Uh, give it a like if you liked the video. Consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.